Hi everyone, welcome back to Adventure 365 and I'm still working on barrel. Um, in this episode I'm going to be putting the cam belt on. I'm not going super in depth into putting the cam belt on as I've got a bit of a time crunch to get it done. So I'm just going to go through the basics with you. The, um, basically I'm just going to put it on and show you that I've put it on. And uh, we're going to either start up or go bang. It's going to be one or the other. But uh, let me just show you what we're actually doing and then um, we'll come back to actually fitting. Now if you go back to the update video, uh, you'll remember that that pulley was missing. So I've actually replaced the oil seal on the uh, camshaft. I've already replaced the oil seal on the crank and it's ready just to put the cam belt back on now and tension it job done it's already locked off in all the right places pulleys lock the flywheels locked off the pumps locked off and I'm pretty happy with all of that now so I can't see there being an issue with that but just thinking of the oil seal at the bottom when you've put a new oil seal in, in at the bottom make sure that you put the o-ring into the bottom pulley there is an o-ring that goes in there and it does need it uh, I've done a couple of these where people have put this bottom pulley back on and not put the o-ring in uh, and they wonder why it leaks oil. So uh, I've got the o-ring in there so all I'm going to do now is assemble this. I'll bring the camera back once everything's in place or I may just do a little bit when I'm putting the, uh, tensioner, the idler tensioners back on because uh, that's what caused me the problems. I've got a new box with some new tensioners in even though I did actually have some uh, yeah that's, that's a brand new one that's brand new I really could have used the old ones but I was ordering a cam kit so I might as well stick the new stuff back in so I'm just going to mount them like I was saying and I'll come back once I've got those on there you go. timing gears in so let me just swap hands because I'm moulding the camera that's in and it's definitely not got the uh, tensioner bar behind it and it and it's dead flush I've put a level on it bottom pulleys in with the o-ring and all the other bits are on so uh, nothing else for it now put the cam belt on tension it and uh, tension the cam belt up to about 11 newton meters 10 11 newton meters should be fine and uh, we're ready to put all this back together and start it up and put some coolant in it hopefully it doesn't just grenade itself Mm. Come on, barrel. Oh, that's the cam belt in. So it's uh, time for uh, a celebration. And plus, it's absolutely boiling in this workshop. And I want to say thank you to my sister for the brew dog. I'm still drinking it. There's, um, I've done two full rotations on the cam belt. Everything's fine. Engine rotates fine. Tension looks good. So uh, torqued everything up, uh, I've put about 11 newton meters of torque on the belt, torqued the um, pump pulley back up to the three bolts on the pump pulley back up to 25 newton meters and now I've just got to put the cam cover on and bottom pulley and just get some coolant in it. Get some coolant in myself, it's absolutely roasting in here guys. Oh. Actually, that's quite good. Um, yeah, still none the wiser to why it actually did what it did. So, uh, yeah, let's get this together and see what happens, eh? If it all blows up again, it all blows up again, doesn't it? I'll buy a Toyota. Thought I'd better give you a quick look before I put it all together. So, there you go. Cam belts in. I said they're torqued back up to 25 newton meters. There's roughly 11 newton meters of torque on the belt through the uh, tensioner pulley, and that's it. It's it's all back on. And I said it rotates. I've done full full a couple of full revolutions on the on the uh, the belt. Everything seems fine. It's got all new seals in it. It shouldn't leak oil now. So we'll uh, wait and see. Well, we'll get together and then get it started. Timing cover's all done. 
So that's all torqued up to 25 newton meters all the way round. The only thing I've got left to do is tighten up the um, the crank bolt and uh, put the belt on. The idler pulley in the middle because I don't have a viscous fan on this. And uh, this is ready for starting. Bit of coolant in it, jobs are good. And so uh, just before I tighten up that bottom pulley, let me show you the tool that you need to tighten it up. Most of you probably already know what tool it is, but I'll just give you a quick look. Because the crank nut is stupidly tight, you need one of these. And this is a crank um, bottom pulley locking off tool. It does have a proper name, but it just locks the bottom pulley off. There's four bolts. Then uh, there's four bolt holes in the pulley. You put it to whichever way you want. It'll sit on the chassis uh, and lock the pulley and let you tighten it up. These are available from Forby. So give, if you need one, that's the best place to get one. Neil sells them over there, Neil and Steph. And uh, yeah, that's the tool that you definitely need if you're going to do this job. Okay, I've got the bottom pulley tightened up. Got the um, auxiliary drive belt on, the uh, you know the serpentine belt, and that's it. I've chucked a bit of water in it, not too much, just in case there's any leaks. I'm not going to put the coolant in yet. I'm going to fire it up. Moment of truth, guys. See if it blows up, eh? Oh, don't blow up. I'll, like, you can watch the engine. I'm going to sit in the cab. Okay. Shout if it blows up, guys. Let's. Uh, Tell me if any bits fall off. I've even got the right ignition keys. Right, moment to truth. Auxiliary belt always squeaks. Oh look, it means I can put a cam belt on. That'll show up in a minute. Yep, yeah, that works. Right, let's get the coolant topped up. Well that's a bonus, isn't it? There's no horrible noises. It hasn't made the screeching noise it made the first time we put that cam uh, timing chain cover on. So I'm thinking that's fixed now. So like I said, I've got to top up the coolant. And uh, the next job will be... The next job will be a double decard and prop shaft. So, uh, right, I'll get one of those ordered. And uh, then hopefully we can take it out for a test drive, see what that anti-roll bar is like. I'm not happy, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, I've just had a really good day out with a few friends up at a car show. Uh, some have got Jeeps, some have got Land Rovers, Overlanders, Off-Roaders. We all met up at a car show. Uh, I've just brought some stuff into the workshop just to put it away. And you know I said I'd done the core plugs on this. Well, I was wrong. I've done the core plugs on it, but the one that I did, the original one that was leaking, is leaking again. There's a pool of coolant on the floor. So, done the cam belt, got all that sorted, got the timing, truck runs absolutely, you know, spot on now, it starts first click, uh, sounds really healthy, and I left it running yesterday to circulate the coolant, and uh, yeah, now it's leaking again, so I've now got to dump all the coolant out, I've got to take the turbo off, I've got to take the inlet manifold, the starter, the exhaust, to get to this bloody core plug. <laughs> Um, I don't know if I can show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this out tonight because it's still a complete engine. All I've done is pulled the airbox out. So airbox is out of the way. I'm going to pull all this apart tonight and I'll get the camera on in the morning when I don't feel like smashing it with a hammer. So bleeping Land Rovers broke again. I'll see you in the morning. It's the next day guys. So I stayed in the workshop last night, like I said, I pulled everything off. So turbo, inlet manifold, starter motor, exhaust to get to the core plugs. And, you know, sure enough, it was the back core plug leaking like I thought it was. So I, before I left last night, I knocked them in a little bit further, 
just to see if they would stop leaking. And sure enough, tightening them up, I just drifted them in a bit further and that, just tightening them up, stopped the back one leaking. It was wet this morning when I came into the workshop. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, it was wet. The one next to it that I replaced, which wasn't wet, because I bloody disturbed it, that one started leaking. <laughs> so I actually made the problem worse. So I've just been to Land Ranger in Middlewich to pick up a couple of core plugs and a new inlet manifold gasket. Even though that one's the one I took off has only been test run, I'll still stick a new one on. But let me show you these and uh, we'll knock, knock them out in a bit and put the new ones in. But when I put the new ones back in, what I'm going to do is, hang on, like I should have done with the first ones, I should have used some silicon. This is Loctite SI5908 and that is actually the stuff that you glue the sump on with. That's the, the silicon that uh, Land Rover recommend that you glue it in with. So if we wipe a bit of that round, drift them in with a bit of silicon, they won't leak again. That stuff's amazing, it glues everything in. So uh, yeah, let me just show you this. There you go, turbo, manifold all the air box and all the other bits we took off, all the exhaust and all the other fun stuff. But this will be a bit dark till I turn the ISO up for you guys, so hang on a second. There you go, you should be able to see that. Uh, those are the two we're going to knock out and put back in with some silicon. They're easy to get at now, or reasonably easy. Well, it's just a pain in the arse more than anything. To have to do it again. I like my job so much I've done it twice. Like I say, uh, that one, I knocked it back in. I've actually started that one leaking. When I came in this morning it was it was wet so that's my bad. And we're going to get these core plugs out. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to knock these out. I'll try to film knocking them out but it's really awkward. I might be able to get the camera in here while I try to knock them out. But no, I need to be here. I might be able to get it in over there. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, let's get these out and get the new ones in. So, I really don't know how much of this you're going to see and I'm going to need a torch because I definitely won't be able to see when I'm in there. So hopefully these will come out as easy as the original ones. You probably can't see much because I'm going to be in the way. It's going to have to come out now because I put a hole in it. I've knocked it through, so now I've just got to get it out of there. Now, I hope you can see this, guys, but get a pair of pliers, give it a wriggle. There you go. One brand new core plug. So I'll just knock the other one out. We'll do the same again. There you go. First one in. Uh, I couldn't really film it because I'm in the way trying to knock that in. And I've used that uh, Loctite to put it in this time. I'll just do the one next to it. And then I'm going to reassemble the engine uh, tonight. That'll be fun. So, uh, yeah, lots of spannering tonight. Get this all together. Hope Karen's going to keep me well fed with coffee. And, uh, yeah, I should have this all buttoned up tonight and back together. Uh, just one quick thing before I start buttoning this up is... I said in the um, the last walk around video we did when we were going through the broken bits, I was going to change the front prop shaft to a double decardon prop shaft. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and I'm wrong. I can't do it because I'm looking at this and I'm thinking it's a 300 and I've got it. It's a 300 in my head. Well, it isn't, is it? The gearbox and transfer box are a 200. So I can't put the um, double decarton off a 300 or a TD5 on it because they're different lengths. So what I'm going to have to do is put a new seal in the gearbox and a new UJ in the prop shaft and just run the prop shaft I've got unless I can find a wide angle one. They must do a wide angle 200 prop shaft. I'll have a look when I've finished doing this tonight. So uh, yeah, like I'm saying, I'm just going to button this up and uh, we'll come back and we'll get this gearbox sorted. Well, what a difference two hours makes. It's all back together. There you go. Two hours. 
exhaust in, turbo in, starter back in, inlet manifold, airbox, the lot, everything's back in. So uh, if I haven't put the coolant in yet, I'm going to do that in the morning, sort all that out. Because I don't want to put coolant in it tonight and have it sitting against the silicon because it's probably not cured. So leave that overnight, top that up in the morning, test run it, and then it just leaves to do the gearbox. So uh, yeah, it's uh, getting there. So last night when I got back, I decided to take the prop shaft off and I did the oil seal without filming it, guys. So it's an owl. Getting the air, it's a pain in the arse, I tell you. So what I'm going to do is uh, put a new UJ, a new universal joint into this prop shaft and that should cure its problems because, uh, I don't know if you can hear this one, if I get my microphone a bit closer, it's got plenty in it. It's not bad but it just needs doing now before it gets any worse. Just get a little screwdriver for that. UJs are not hard to do. Getting the circlips out is a pain in the arse. I might have to just have a play with this for a while, guys, off camera. Nearly had it. Yeah. I'll get this in the vise and I'll see if I can get the UJ, uh, get this circlip uh, out. Last one. I've got the other three out. They're all there. So, uh, I've left the difficult one till last, should have done the easy one first, filmed that, made it look like I was a hero. This one's really stiff. We may struggle with this one, oh, wrong, wrong tools. I'm not going to flick it out. Yeah, it's stuck in there. It won't, doesn't want to come out. So I'm going to... F oh, nearly. <laughs> I need another screwdriver. There we go. Can't go back in now. Well, it really doesn't want to come out. I have picked the most difficult one here, guys. To film. I always wait. I can get uh, one side out, but not the other. So we free top. Problem is, I haven't got any more of these circlips, so I can't break this one. That's what I don't want to do. I can lift this corner. This one has been a pig. The others came out relatively easily. There we go. Once you get, once you get one corner out, you're a, you're in a winner. Walking it out now. There you go. Cool. Sorted. Right, now we've got to knock that out. So rather than knocking this out, I've just put a socket in it and just pushing it through on the vice. That, that went really easily. Uh, I need a bigger socket on the other side. In fact, I want to push it the other way. Let me get a socket. Yeah, it's one bearing cap off. We'll get the other one. Should be able to get that one out now.
This is a lot easier to do with a press than a vise. Got it all apart. The uh, that was a pain. It didn't want to come apart. But that has had a UJ in it before. That is not the original UJ, I would say. So um, this is a temporary fix then, because if it's gone once. There you go, there's the one I've just taken out. That isn't an original UJ. So uh, this will probably be getting a prop shaft soon. I'm just going to clean all this mess up and uh, press the new one in. And I've taken the new roll, the new UJ out, uh, taken the end caps off. There's little needle roll bearings on the inside of the cap, so make sure they all stay in place. They, they're pretty good. The grease they put in them usually holds them in place. So the um, the job now is just to put it back together so get that into place make sure the dust seal stays on stay on dust seal I'll just pop the cap in the end if you have any problems getting these in it means one of the needles is fell over oh, that one's just tied it will go on there we go. So squash that one in. You need to go three quarters of the way at the moment, so so this is a lot easier to do with a press than a, than a vise. So that's not pressed all the way, it's only pressed three quarters of the way in. We want to do the same on this side. And hopefully we can get the other end on. That's why I'm not pushing them all the way in. That's it. That feels fine. Just check it, make sure it swivels. It does. Right, so we can either put the clips back on that or press the other end on. Uh, let's make sure we can get the other end on. It's a while since I've done one of these guys. It's been a long time. Usually I just go and buy a new one. I have put a mark on here so it goes back together the same way. Oh yeah we can get that in, that's fine. So we'll press the, the little end back together. I've scored a line in both ends so I know it goes back together the same way it came apart. It's a good idea to do. And my battery's about to go on the camera. So now we know we can put this together. Uh, I'll just press this end together because it's easy. Well, it's uh, out of the... Uh, well, well, it's not attached to the rest of the prop shaft. That needs to come up. Should be able to get the circle back in that. Definitely will be able to now. And this pretty much carries on a bit like this for all four of them, so. What you do need is a decent set of circlet pliers, which is something I have not got. Tighten that other side up by pushing it up against the circlip, then you know it's bedded in place. Tell that's just tightened up because it's just squidged the grease back out. Am 
Might need to go a bit tighter on that, Jim. See if we can get the circle clip in. If the circle clip goes in, it's tight enough. Nope, needs to go tighter. Just taking the circlet back out. It's only a smidgen off. Oh, we got this from we got this jab again, have we? Let me just get to locate. See if I can take it back out. Do, just get a smaller socket. That did it. Sorted. Right, so that's one end done. Now I just need to do the other end. So I'll get that done because it's just the same. It's just a bit more morley. It's literally just putting that on, put the end caps in and uh, put it all back together but I'm going to drop it about a dozen times because I'm doing it on my own so uh, yeah I'll be back in a second all back together hasn't got that annoying rattle now it hasn't got that free play in it so that should be good for a while mm, that end isn't going to be too long before it needs one so I'm going to bolt this back on I'm not going to film it it's just putting a prop shaft on so uh, I'm going to wrap this video up here and if you've enjoyed this episode guys give me that thumbs up make sure you click that notification bell and i will see you on the next one